So I'm going to talk about the events in the Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman episode, The Eyes Have It. Even though this is mostly based on the events of this universe, I may pull in evidence from other sources. For those of you who don't know, in this episode, a scientist named Dr. Light haha, wants to get rid of Superman so he can get a device that uses light to put information into other people's brains. Light is an eye doctor, so he decides to blind the big blue Boy Scout. In the end, Lois gets Clark unblinded, Light doesn't get the device, and we all live happily ever after. So, let's cut to the chase. How would you blind Superman? Well, in order to really knock out what's happening, first we have to talk about how Clark's eyes actually work. It is possible Superman's eyes have the ability to see and produce light. This maintains Newton's outdated idea that eyes produce light, a trait that could be applicable to all Kryptonians, not just ones under a yellow sun. I don't like that theory much, though, because for starters, it's wrong. Superman's eyes can't actively produce light, otherwise everyone would know Clark wasn't human as soon as they saw him in the dark. So that's not quite it. In theory, Clark's eyes could have cat-like properties, what's known as eye shine, along with extra muscles and lenses for telescopic vision. This makes more sense, as he would use the light from the eye shine to make his heat vision and x-rays, rather than actively make light, like a Newtonian's eye light idea. This theory is supported by the red sun of Krypton. There would be less visible light coming from a red sun. Therefore, all Kryptonians would adapt to low-light environments and have eyes structured differently from humans. If we add to this, let's think about what else Clark could have in his eyes. We've already established his telescopic vision, but he's also shown the ability to filter and focus light. This is where polarizing filters come in. Polarizing filters and lenses are not unique to the lab's setting. The peacock mantis shrimp, as well as the cuttlefish, have the ability to view polarized light, and a whole lot of other stuff. So it's not that far-fetched for Clark to have polarizing filters in his eyes. These filters take an unorganized beam of light and turn it into one precise wave, going in one direction. A second polarizing filter can be oriented such that all of the previously polarized light can get through, when it's parallel, or none of it does, when it's perpendicular. Superman, probably unconsciously, learned to polarize light from faraway sources and construct a scene via the available data that was reorganized. In this scene, Clark filters bright light with polarization, lowering the intensity and allowing him to read the message. We can also probably assume that Clark has a minimum of four photoreceptors, comparable to birds. For comparison, humans have two. So right now we have a pair of eyes with more than one lens for telescopic vision, more than one polarizing filter for interpretation of corrupted light, a reflective membrane that makes more light available to the photoreceptors, the eye shine, and double the color range of a typical human. That is a very, very complex system. So, how did they blind Superman? Okay, let's just take a step back really fast and talk about lasers. Lasers are separated into classes based upon risk. One being the lowest risk, and four being the highest. Lasers of class three and above can blind you in a lot of ways. A lot. You should not mess with lasers. The most common is flash blindness, where the eye takes in too much light and gets overwhelmed. This is the damage your common laser pointer, a class 3 laser, will do with direct exposure. Higher classes of lasers, those used in LASIK surgery, condensed matter physics, and optics work, can blind you by quite literally setting you on fire. Do not mess with lasers. A quick note. I'm assuming the guiding beam mentioned in the episode has a much larger width than the actual laser. Otherwise, even at its highest setting, it wouldn't do diddly squat because it would basically devolve into a fancy purple flashlight. In general, a vast majority of lasers produce polarized light, unless they are very, very, very cheap, as I have unfortunately learned, which will be important later. What actually blinds you is the laser intensity, measured in watts per meter, or centi or nanometer, depending on the order of magnitude. Intensity is epsilon naught, a constant, times the speed of light, also a constant, times the index of refraction, dependent on a medium, times the energy of the light squared, Frequency of the light times the speed of light, all over two. This might sound scary, but it's actually pretty darn simple. Clark was supposedly blinded because the Kryptonian eye is sensitive to ultraviolet light. That, and I quote, when ultraviolet light is shined on certain substances, it can turn them opaque. Perhaps it is the same for the Kryptonian eye. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Or at least doesn't make sense in the way it's portrayed. Ratcheting up the size of a bullet doesn't work against Superman. Why would changing the intensity of a laser? Not only that, but there are UV rays coming from the sun, and they don't blind Clark. Heck, they give Superman his powers. So, all in all, I think Dr. Faraday got lucky with the result, but made a misstep in his conclusions. After all this explanation, we finally get to my theory. 
the Kryptonian form of flash blindness. Let's go back to an optical model of Clark's eyes. The key thing here are the multiple polarizing filters. If those filters are perpendicular to each other, no light gets through at all. In attempting to filter out as much light as possible, they rotated to have a 90 degree disparity, but were still letting light through as they were beyond capacity, just as the human eye would be with a high-powered laser. This effect was only compounded by his innate biological eye shine and the multiple magnifying lenses. Similar to flash blindness, Clark's eyes didn't immediately heal. Why not, you may ask? Clark is invulnerable. They should have healed right away. This is where the eye shine and internal lenses come into play. His biology amplified those waves. We've seen that Superman's heat vision can penetrate his skin, so it stands to reason that his eye shine could damage his own optical faculties in extreme scenarios. All of these factors come together in a perfect storm to manage to blind our beloved hero. As for being unblinded, well, they show that a concentrated beam of infrared light being the antidote, but again, I think Dr. Faraday got lucky. I think it was the darkness. The only cure for flash blindness is to cover the eyes and avoid exposing them to UV light. In the time Clark spent in the dark, along with a calibration using the infrared light from the device, his sight returns just in time to save the day. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or would like to make a request for a theory I could tackle, you can contact me via my Tumblr or go ahead and leave a comment. Could you put that in layman's terms? No, because scientists are awful. Well, Gary adopted the gold standard in 1897. Alternating current is deadlier than direct current. The Pacific box jellyfish is the most dangerous animal in the ocean. Ultraviolet light is invisible to the naked eye. If a spin wheel's geared internally with a pinion, the wheels rotate in the same direction. This describes me as a person. According to this, there are only about eight people on planet Earth who are capable of understanding Dr. Faraday's theories. And I can tell you this right now, Lois. I am not one of them. All right, listen to this. The nonlinear amplifier multiplies the input signal with obvious trigonomic results. Obvious to whom? This is like in textbooks when they say the proof is trivial, but it's like 17 and a half pages long and fundamental for your understanding of the chapter. What? What did I just say? I have absolutely no idea. Did I just explain what you were talking about? I don't know. How could I do that? I know they meant it as a joke, but like, this hits too close to home, man. Light. Apparently, Dr. Faraday understood the properties of light better than anyone who's ever lived. Apparently, those properties can only be explained to people who already understand them. I'm looking at you, computational astrophysicists.